adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. Starring that Jet A. Jerry Olace, Rocket J. Squirrel. And his pal, Bullwinkle the Moose. Hi, glad to see you again. Likewise. We got some great things on the show today. Like what, like what? Well, you ought to know, Bullwinkle. You're in some of them. Well, let's get started. All the men who go down to the sea in ships, sailors, fishermen, garbage scout captains, have heard and repeated the story of the legendary whaling whale, Maybe Dick. Maybe Dick was supposed to be big enough to swallow a whole ship. Maybe. He could swim faster than any vessel in the sea. Maybe. And he had been seen by sailors whose reputations for sobriety were beyond reproach. Maybe. Yes, for centuries, Maybe Dick has been a, a shadowy, shadowy terror for, for all, all seafaring men. men. Pretty exciting, eh, Rock? Oh. That's just an old wives' tale, Bullwinkle. Old wives with whiskers? I mean, it's just make-believe. Make-believe? Sure. There's no such thing as a wailing whale. Well, if you can't believe what you read in the comic books, what can you believe? Oh, Bullwinkle. It's enough to destroy a young moose's faith. Oh, come on. There just couldn't be such a thing. You did sure make a good premise for a story, though. And it might at that, because at that moment, 3,000 miles away from Frostbite Falls, a Navy scout plane was flying over the Atlantic Ocean. Hey, Commander, there's a raft. A raft? Raft of what? A life raft down there. Sure enough, far below, a tiny figure was waving violently. A Navy vessel dashed to the rescue, and in a little while, the white-haired survivor was telling his story to a group of officers. It was terrible, terrible. Look what it's done to me. I'm a wreck. I think you survived pretty well for a man your age, sir. My age? I'm 22 years old. And the castaway told his horrifying story. It seems that just a few days ago, he had been the young, vigorous captain of a fishing boat. Then one afternoon, he suddenly heard a strange sound. <laughs> Hey, Cap, what's that noise? What noise? That mournful whale. Maybe it's a mournful whale. <laughs> but the captain had guessed far better than he knew, for at that moment a huge shape hove into view. Cap, he's going to swallow us. And as the frantic seaman leaped overboard, the gargantuan whale did swallow the entire boat in one bite. Or at any rate, that was the castaway's story. What do you think we ought to do, Commander Binnacle? I think we ought to give this story the same consideration we do to any new idea. Yes, sir. And so in a short time, the unfortunate castaway was safely ensconced in the happy hatch. But I tell you, there was a wailing whale. Why won't they believe me? Ha! They won't even believe me. And you know I never lie. Why, who are you? George Washington. That might have been the end of the whole episode if it weren't that the next day, three more ships disappeared. Liners lost as whale whales. Maybe Dick strikes again. The Navy immediately sent out a fleet of destroyers. They disappeared without a trace. That did it. People by the thousands canceled their sailing plans. So did the ship's crews. The shipping industry was on the verge of ruin. Then that great shipping magnate, Pericles Parnassus, came up with his great idea. American people are loving fishing, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. They were fishing for anything, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Then we offer it free boat and tackle to anyone who will fish for maybe Dick. Mm, come, come, sir. Do you think there's a nitwit anywhere in the world stupid enough to take you up on that offer? Gentlemen, as old philosopher once said, the gustibus non disputandum. What does that mean? There's a soccer born every minute. Of course, Pericles Parnassus published his fabulous fishing offer, and of course, there was no one in the country stupid enough to take him up on such a harebrained scheme. Except... Oh, no. Will Rocky and Bullwinkle really try to go after maybe Dick all by themselves? We'll find out next time in Vagabond Voyage or the Castoff's Castoff. <laughs> Last
last time you remember, the world shipping industry was being destroyed by that whaling whale, Maybe Dick, who engulfed whole ocean liners in one big bite. A fleet of Navy destroyers was sent to destroy him, but disappeared without a trace, except... Of course, people canceled their sailing plans, crews deserted their ships, even the rats got off. Things looked very black. Everyone was worried. <laughs> Not everyone. Who are you? I'm president of an airline. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> As a last-ditch measure, the famous shipping tycoon, Pericles Parnassus, offered a free fishing boat and fishing tackle to anyone who would go after Maybe Dick. Of course, there was no one stupid enough to fall for that. Of course not. No one dim-witted enough to take him up on such a crafty scheme. He can't fool me. No. He's got to supply the bait, too. Oh, dear. A week later, Rocky was surprised when two burly men knocked at his door. You, Rocket J. Squirrel? Yeah? You, Bullwinkle Moose? Me, Bullwinkle. Who, you? Me, come. Uh, I mean, I'm from Parnassus. Mighty pretty country around there. Once they was... That's Pericles, Parnassus. And this is Frostbite Falls, Minnesota. It's a dead standoff, all right. Oh, you're going to play it cozy, are you? The chicken and out, Benson. Who's chicken? Who's chicken? Then you will go fishing for maybe Dick, huh? Ah! Hey, you better tell your story to Mr. Parnassus, bud. Rocky! Rocky. And so a few days later, Rocky and Bullwinkle stood before the most powerful shipping magnet in the world. But you already signed the application. You got it to go. No, we don't got it to go. You got it to go. For a powerful magnet, you don't pick up things very fast. Look at it this way. It's for the good of your country. My country? It's for freedom of the seas. Freedom? For the little people everywhere. All the midgets, huh? It's for home and mother. Mother, count me in. Well, plus big reward. Sold. And in a little while, our heroes were aboard the good ship Athabasco. You feeling seasick, Bullwinkle? No, I always turn green this time of year. Well, if you think this is bad, Bullwinkle, yeah. just wait till we cast off. Goodbye, Rocky. Goodbye, Rocky. Goodbye, Rocky. Goodbye, Rocky. Goodbye, Rocky. Goodbye, Rocky. I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you. Who are you? I'm from the By the Wee Funeral Parlor. Say, who's the captain of this fishing boat, Mr. Parnassus? Well, Rocky, by baby boy Keith, you're in luck. We got a genuine retired ex-Navy captain to steer boats for you. I'd sure like to meet him. I don't was understood it. He should be up on the bridge right now. Maybe he's late. Well, good luck and don't worry. If anything goes wrong, you both got big insurance policies made out to me personally. Sure is nice of you to take such an interest, Mr. Parnassus. Well, what are friends for if you can't make a couple of bucks? You said it! Sheet! But just as Bullwinkle took the tycoon's hand, the boat moved away from the dock. Uh-oh! We're underway! Have a good trip, dear moose. Same to you, Mr. Parnassus. But I'm not going it anywhere. But he was, for when Bullwinkle let go of his hand, Pericles Parnassus dropped into the water. Quickly, Rocky received a life preserver, zoomed through the air, and made a perfect ringer around the floundering man's head. You saved him, Rock! Not quite, for Pericles Parnassus refused to let go of his gloves and walking stick to take hold of the life preserver, and so disappeared from view. Stand back! Stand back! I'll save him. But Bullwinkle... You're not the only hero on this show, you know. I'm the only one that can swim. Yeah, that's right. Well, it looks like a short trip after all. Be with us next time for Fear on the Pier or... What's up, Doc? <laughs> I guess that about wraps up another Rocky show. Certainly hope you enjoyed it. I did. I always say... A bullwinkle. Time for us to go. Already? Okay, but first, here are some of the people who made this show impossible.
adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and friends. Starring that Jet A. Jerry Olace, Rocket J. Squirrel. And his pal, Bullwinkle the Moose. Hi, glad to see you again. Likewise. We got some great things on the show today. Like what, like what? Well, you ought to know, Bullwinkle. You're in some of them. Well, let's get started. This sumptuous hall is the boardroom of the World Shipping Council. These sad-faced men are the biggest men in the shipping industry. And this chart is the reason they looked so glum. Here is the level of world shipping just a few weeks ago. Here is the date on which the whaling whale, maybe Dick, began to swallow boats in one gulp. And here is the level of shipping today. He used an old nautical term, gentlemen. We're sunk. But a short distance away, Rocky and Bullwinkle have taken on the fearsome job of fishing for maybe Dick in a boat supplied by Pericles Parnassus, the great shipping potentate. Unfortunately, as they were saying goodbye, the boat moved away from the dock and Pericles fell into the water. Rocky made a bullseye on him with a life preserver, but he refused to let go of his cane and gloves to take it and sank immediately. Bullwinkle went to his rescue, forgetting in his haste that he couldn't swim. Bullwinkle! Downward the moose plunged, and as luck would have it, plummeted right through the center of the life preserver, or almost right through. Actually, he stuck halfway. <laughs> Desperately, Bullwinkle wigwagged with his feet. While on board the ship, Rocky wrote down what he said. S-A-V-E-M-E. Savim? That doesn't make sense. And Rocky tore the message in half. Fortunately, he happened to glance down at it again before throwing it away. Save me! Aha! That's the message! And in a trice, the quick-witted squirrel zoomed from the boat to a nearby crane. Grabbing the hook, he flashed back to Bullwinkle and lassoed his legs. In just a moment, the waterlogged moose was being drawn slowly out of the water. Did you get Mr. Parnassus, Bullwinkle? No! I got his walking stick, though. Sure is a heavy thing, too. Small wonder, for as the other end of the walking stick came into view, Pericles Parnassus was still hanging onto it. Bullwinkle, you saved him! How about that, no? Gee, how did you ever manage to get into that little ring? What bothers me is, how am I going to manage to get out of it? Meanwhile, back at the boardroom... Then it's settled, gentlemen. Next week, we all become television producers. I thought we were all going to commit suicide together. It's the same thing, what? But the fleet owners were spared that terrible fate. Hold your heads, gentle people. I got it. Good news tonight. What is it? Tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us. I just sent Rocky and Bullwinkle to catch maybe Dick. Oh. No. What's so good newsy about that? They'll just be swallowed up like all the rest. But look at the boat I sent them on. Looks like any other boat to me. Maybe Dick will swallow it too. Of course, and look what he swallows. I say, the ship's full of TNT. You said it, sport. So when the whale swallows it, the boat, kaboom. No if sends or maybe Dick's. What about the squirrel and the moose? Gentlemen, to get rid of maybe Dick, no price is too high to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if somebody else pays it. All unaware that their ship was a regular living bomb, our heroes stood at the rail waving farewell to the Statue of Liberty as they passed Bedloe's Island. Hmm, she's not waving back. You wouldn't want her to drop the torch, would you? Yeah, that's right. Gee, Bullwinkle, I wonder when we'll see her again. Well, if you'll just look on the other side of the boat, you'll get a nice view. Sure enough, the boat had swung in a full circle and was heading back where they came from. What's the matter with that captain anyway? Maybe he forgot his driver's license. I don't think he even has one, Bullwinkle. Yes, the good ship Athabasca weaved in a strange manner and at last headed straight for the Statue of Liberty. We're gonna crash, Rocky! Full speed astern, Captain! Yeah, wherever you are! But even our heroes didn't know the full extent of their trouble, for that boat, remember, is chock full of high explosive. Don't miss our next episode, TNT for two, or Fright Cargo! <laughs> Today's 
lesson is mighty important, remember? Bullwinkle is a... Not... When we left our heroes last time, their boat was headed straight for the Statue of Liberty, and unknown to them, that boat was full of high explosive. Captain, Captain! Whoever you are! Full steam astern, or fast and below, and all that stuff! And while you're about it, stop the boat, too! No you shouting anymore, Bullwinkle. We don't even know where he is. But let's look on the bright side, Rock. What's that? We know where he isn't. Come on, we only got a few seconds. And as the boat drew nearer and nearer the Statue of Liberty, our heroes looked all over the main deck and the bridge. He's not here, Rock! You don't suppose he's below, do you? Below what? Follow me. And Rocky and Bullwinkle dashed down to the engine room just in time to hear... Sailing, sailing over the Marjorie Main. Bullwinkle, do you hear what I hear? Of course, we're on the same channel, Rock. That sounds like Captain Peter Wrongway Peach Fuzz. And what more it is. Bless my stars and goddess, it's Rocky Squirrel. How did There's no you... time to talk now, Captain. Shove those controls to full speed ahead. You out of your mind, Rocky. We'll bash into the Statue of Liberty for sure and all. Yes, the Athabasco was right on the verge of disaster as Captain Peach Fuzz grabbed for the engine controls and then... <laughs> with a fearsome sound, the ship reversed direction and began to travel backwards. But you said full speed ahead, Rocky. Sure, I know we do just the opposite. Well, Rocky, what are you doing up here on the bridge? The bridge? This here room is below the water line. Hmm, a sunken bridge. These new vessels are pretty modern. Captain, you haven't changed an iota. Yeah, and you're supposed to change him every thousand miles. Well, it wasn't long before Rocky and Bullwinkle had Captain Peach Fuzz straightened out and in the right place. Well, you're the boss, Rocky. Where to? Well, any place we can fish for maybe Dick. Maybe Dick? You know about him, I take it. Yes, and I have only one thing to say to you boys. What's that? Abandon ship! Grab him, Bullwinkle! Got him! Now, don't be silly, Rocky. Nobody goes fishing for the whaling whale. Let's go back. All right, Captain. You can set our course for home. Rocky, we gonna give up already? Shh. Remember what happened earlier in the episode? You're not gonna repeat the same joke. They liked it once, they'll love it twice. Yo-ho, lads! We're homeward bound. And giving the wheel a hearty spin, the adult brain skipper headed directly out to sea. Well, we might as well get started, Bullwinkle. Break out the fishing tackle. In a few minutes, Bullwinkle had assembled their special whale gear. A telephone pole and two miles of cable with an anchor for a hook. What's a rowboat for, Bullwinkle? Well, maybe Dick likes to swallow ships, you know. So? This is bait. And the good ship Athabasco plowed ahead as our boys trolled for the whaling whale. Only one thing bothered me, Rob. What's that? If maybe Dick grabs that anchor, do we have him or does he have us? Never fear, Bullwinkle. Remember, it's for home and mother. Personally, my mother never cared for fish. She was more of a... Bullwinkle! Where? Oh, that's me! Bullwinkle! I got the strangest feeling that somebody's watching me. Of course, it's me. No, somebody else. In the middle of the ocean? Pish tush, Rocky. And may I say, fie. There's nobody here but us and the captain. Yeah, I guess you're right. But at that moment, a strange single eye was watching Rocky carefully. Not from on board, but from the ocean itself. Who is this strange intruder and what does he want? We'll find out next time in Underwater Eyeball or The Deep Blue Sea. Well, I guess that about wraps up another Rocky show. Certainly hope you enjoyed it. I did. I always say... A bullwinkle. Time for us to go. Already? Okay, but first, here are some of the people who made this show impossible.
Well, things are certainly in a mess since the return of the legendary Maybe Dick. For Maybe Dick is a wailing whale with a taste for the liner things of life. But all is not lost, for our heroes, Rocky and Bullwinkle, are all at sea, angling for the monster with a telephone pole as a fishing rod. Above them, Captain Peter Wrongway Peach Fuzz is keeping a sharp lookout. Never saw such a fog in all my life. Captain, that's the bulkhead you're staring at. Hmm. I thought something was amiss. It's the first fog I ever saw with rivets on it. And the good captain began to scan the ocean for any sign of maybe Dick. Meanwhile, our heroes were trolling tensely from the stern of the ship. Don't worry, Bullwinkle. We're sure to get a bite. That's what I'm worried about. Huh? What's a good remedy for whale bite? You know, Bullwinkle, I got a funny feeling we're being watched. By whom? Whom? Whom is watching us? That's what I want to know. We're being watched by whom? Yeah, by whom? By me, too. But then suddenly the sharp-eyed squirrel spotted an object some distance from the ship. Hokey smoke, Bullwinkle, look there. What is it, Brock? It, it looks like a big shiny eye. Well, I'll be jiggered. I've looked at the ocean lots of times, but this is the first time it ever looked back. Rocky Bullwinkle, there's a peeping Tom off the port bow. We see it, Captain Peach Fuzz. What is it? Just looks like a big eye floating by itself, way out in the middle of the ocean. Maybe it's a private eye. <laughs> Perhaps it was Bullwinkle's bad joke, we'll never know, but the eye suddenly disappeared. And in its place, a strange-looking metal tube emerged from the sea and pointed at our friend. Look out, Rocky! It may be loaded! And loaded it was, for a huge jet of water shot out of the tube and swept our heroes off their feet. Gee, this is terrible, Bullwinkle! Yeah, I got nothing against bears, mind you, but it ain't Saturday yet. Rocky, Bullwinkle, the boat is filling with water. We're foundering. Floundering? Foundering, Bullwinkle. He means all that water sinking our boat. Well, then there's only one thing to do. What's that? I wish I knew. We gotta think of something in a hurry. Yeah, or else take to the boats. That's it, Bullwinkle. You got it. Yeah, I know. What is it? Well, take to the boat. And desert a sinking ship. That's a ratty thing to do. No, we'll row out in a lifeboat and try to turn that thing off. Good idea, Rock. Come on. But just as our heroes were about to launch the lifeboat, Rocky saw a strange sight in the wheelhouse. Oh, we can look. Yes, the wheelhouse had been filled with water, and Captain Peach Fuzz was inside it, wigwagging frantically. You go ahead, Bullwinkle. I gotta save Captain Peach Fuzz. And Rocky dashed to the wheelhouse door and flung it open. Now, what did you go and do that for, Rocky? The wheelhouse was full of water. I know it. Didn't you signal open the door? Of course not. I signaled, hand me the soap. Meanwhile, Bullwinkle had rowed out to the source of all their trouble. That is the biggest water pistol I ever did see. Now, where does it turn off? But try as he might, Bullwinkle couldn't find a nozzle or a valve anywhere. Guess I'll have to make my own. And with a bulge of mighty moose muscle, Bullwinkle tied the metal tube in a knot. Nice going, Bullwinkle. But Bullwinkle's action had a strange result, for suddenly... It's that blinking eye again. Well, this time he won't get off so easy, Mr. Peeker. Gotcha! Be careful, Bullwinkle! Don't worry, Rock. I'll hold on to him till you... <laughs> and a hapless Bullwinkle was dragged beneath the surface with only an ominous trail of bubbles to mark his passing. Don't miss our next watery episode, Underwater Moose or the Aqualunk. <laughs> Well, the last we saw of Bullwinkle Moose may have been the last we saw of Bullwinkle Moose, for he had grabbed onto the mysterious ocean-going eye determined to bring the intruder to bay. Instead, he was brought into the bay, and the only sign of him was an ominous stream of bubbles from underwater. Hokey smoke! Break out the diving equipment, Captain! I'm going after him! And in just a few moments, Rocky was fitted out with a diver's rig and ready to go over the side. Captain, while I'm underwater, you keep going in circles. That's the one thing I do best, Rocky. Bye! And the Lucky Squirrel plunged into the sea in the almost hopeless hope of finding his friend. Down and down Rocky sank until he was on the sandy bottom far beneath the sea. Gee, it's sure gloomy down here. I'd better go back up and get a flashlight. It was then that Rocky made a horrifying discovery. The diving gear was so heavy he couldn't get off the bottom. <laughs> and yet if he took it off, he'd drown before he got to the top. Pokey smoke! Looks like Bullwinkle and I are here to stay. Nevertheless, the soggy squirrel began to look for his friend. Bullwinkle! Meanwhile, many fathoms overhead, Captain Peter Peach Fuzz radioed the news of our hero's plight all over the world. Flash! Rocky Squirrel and Bullwinkle have been lost at sea. Of course, everybody was shocked and dismayed at the tragic news.
in England. I say, Sir Digby, black tie with full dress. It's for Rocky and Bullwinkle, old chap. You mean? Yes, I'm in evening morning. In France? Messieurs, we face a cabinet crisis. How come this? We want to drink a farewell toast to Rocky and Bullwinkle. And? We can't find the key to the cabinet. In the United States? Hope is dwindling tonight for Rocky and Bullwinkle. Too bad. Yes, America's sweethearts seem definitely on the missing list. Tough. And now tonight's sports final. The Giants lost again today. No! No! <laughs> in Frostbite Falls, Rocky and Bullwinkle's hometown, even the railroad station was draped in black crepe. Black crepe? Heck, that's soot! <laughs> Meanwhile, back on the ocean floor, Rocky was still searching for his pal. Little did he know that someone or something was really searching for him. Yes, as Rocky moved through the murky gloom, a dark shape slithered behind him, a huge single eye glaring balefully. Then suddenly, two huge claws shot out and grabbed our hero. Help! Rocky's cries for help rose upward swiftly in the form of bubbles, and then as they struck the surface... Help! 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 Well, it looks as if Captain Peach Fuzz might be the only good guy left alive on our program. Wouldn't that be something, though? I can see it now. Peter Peach Fuzz and his friends. But I digress. I must save my friend Rocky. And casting aside all fear as well as a chance for a show of his own, Captain Wrongway Peach Fuzz went overboard to the rescue. But of course, he had put his diving gear on the wrong way. As a result, when he turned on his air valve, the jet of compressed air blew him clear back on board ship again. He was very surprised. Yes, I've fallen into the water lots of times, but this is the first time I ever fell out. Undaunted, the brave captain adjusted his air tank and dived in once more, leaving the SS Athabasco traveling in circles wider and wider circles, till finally the ship disappeared from sight entirely. So even if our heroes come up to the top, they're still sunk. Don't miss our next episode, Terror on the Seas, or we've only begun to fright. <laughs> It all started, you remember, with a reappearance after a hundred years of Maybe Dick the Wailing Whale. <coughs> Maybe Dick made a steady diet of ocean liners and, of course, threw the shipping industry into a panic. That's when the big shipping tycoon, Pericles Panassas, sent Rocky and Bullwinkle off in their frail craft to capture the leviathan of the deep. The last we saw of Bullwinkle was a stream of bubbles from underwater, a stream that stopped ominously. Rocky leaped in to save Bullwinkle and instead found himself so weighed down by his diving equipment that he couldn't get back up. And Captain Peach Fuzz distinguished himself by being the only captain to go down ahead of his ship. Then, when everybody was underwater, the Athabasco, which had been left running by Captain Peach Fuzz, sailed out of sight. And on top of that, when we left Rocky last time, he had just been seized by a pair of sinister-looking claws. And now on with our laugh-packed adventure. You must laugh awful easy. Rocky found himself propelled swiftly along the ocean floor and straight toward a large underwater cliff. Hokey smoke, I want to be squashed. But just then a familiar figure came into sight. It's Captain Peach Fuzz. Stop! Unhand that squirrel. Oddly enough, the strange creature did let go of Rocky with one of his claws. Well, I guess you see now who's the boss. You are, sir. And with both our friends in his grasp, the mysterious deep-sea dweller again dashed at the cliff. But let us return for a moment to a tall building on a big city waterfront. Inside it is the walnut-paneled office of Pericles Panassus. I paneled it in walnuts because I can't stand peanuts. <laughs> How can you make jokes, however feeble, when we're on the verge of ruin? Because I sent the Draki squirrel and Bullwinkle Moose to get maybe Dick, ain't it? But you know their ship will be swallowed like all the rest. That's right, sport. And inside of the ship is 20 tons TNT. When maybe Dick swallows it, poom! But, Monsieur Parnassus, what about Rocky and Bullwinkle? I got special plan for them. But what that plan was, we'll never know, for at that moment... Mr. Parnassus, sir, the Athabasco is coming back into port at full speed. They chickened out, huh? I can't tell, sir. There's no one aboard. No one aboard? Rocky and Bullwinkle are gone? Looks that way. What shall we do? I suggest we all stand for a moment of silence. I suggest we send a wreath. Not too large. 
What about you, Mr. Parnassus? I suggest we run for our lives. But why? Because if that ship hits the dock, it'll be kaboom for all of us. And when I say kaboom, I mean kaboom! Now, oh, there's something you don't see every day, Chauncey. What's that, Edgar? A lot of ship owners flying through the air. Nonsense, Edgar. Everybody flies these days. Without an airplane? Probably one of those champagne flights. Yeah. And meanwhile, what of our heroes under the sea? Yeah, what? Held fast by the strange creature, they drew closer and closer to the cliff wall. What could they do? We could close our eyes. But at the last minute, a small door opened the cliff, and our heroes vanished from sight into solid rock. And now, where do we stand? Bullwinkle has disappeared. Rocky and Captain Peach Fuzz have disappeared. Good heavens, there's nobody left. Be with me next time, anyway, for Blank Night or the age of nothing. Since our friends started on their search for Maybe Dick the Wailing Whale, things have gone from bad to worse, which is tough for them, but makes a much better story. And last time, you remember, Rocky and Captain Peach Fuzz had been seized in the claws of a strange subterranean creature who dashed toward a sheer rock cliff. At the last possible second, a small door opened in the cliff, and our friends disappeared inside. Immediately, the door closed again. Now, there's something you don't see every day, Chauncey. What's that, Edgar? A TV program where all they show you is a picture of a stone. Oh, I don't know, Edgar. After all, it is called the Rocky Show. True, Chauncey, true. Meanwhile, inside the cliff, Rocky and the captain were startled to find themselves rising up and up. It's getting lighter. Pretty soon, we ought to be on the surface. But to our friends' surprise, they suddenly found themselves in very strange surroundings. Well, here we are on land, Rocky. Yeah, but what land? A good question, that, for this was a very odd-looking place indeed. Captain, I don't think this is even the United States. No, but it might be Southern California. Sure is pretty, though. I wonder how long we'll be able to enjoy it. What do you mean? Well, I don't want to be a sourball, Rocky, but have you forgotten our little friend back there? That's right! Hey, let us go! And surprisingly enough, the strange creature did let them go. All right, Rocky, we'll sell our lives dearly. Oh, let's not haggle about price, Captain. Rocky, it spoke to us. Yeah, and in Bullwinkle's voice. Doesn't look a thing like him, though. I'm afraid he's inside that monster. Don't worry, Bullwinkle, we'll save you. Rocky, if he's already been eaten, there's not much we can do. We can try. Hey, it sounds hollow. Do you suppose... Rocky, look there. You busted it. Hey, that isn't alive at all. Not now it isn't. It never was. It's some kind of a machine. That's absolutely right, Rocky. Pokey Smoke, who are you? Pompano's the name. Fiorello La Pompano. I'm the mayor. Mayor of what? Of all this. Rocky, welcome to Submerbia. Submerbia? You heard the man. Submerbia. Bowinkle, it's you. Or else a figment of the imagination. Who's a fig, Newton? Bowinkle, what are you doing in there? Just standing here. You know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought I'd make a funny. Well, it wasn't so very funny. Well, I've been away a long time. That's what I mean. Where? Well, leave us flash back a few episodes and I'll tell you. It all started... It all started when Bullwinkle grabbed hold of that mysterious eye in the middle of the sea. Sort of a sea and eye. Uh, do you want to make jokes or tell the story? Sorry. As soon as he grabbed it, the eye pulled him under. But Bullwinkle was not to be shaken loose so easily. He hung on grimly, and then as his eyes grew accustomed to being underwater, he saw that he actually held on to the periscope of a strange-looking undersea craft. Running out of breath and bravery at the same instant, he let go and started for the top. But a large nozzle emerged from the vessel, and acting like a vacuum cleaner, pulled him closer and closer. Bullwinkle's struggles were in vain, and he suddenly disappeared into the tube. Stay where you are, Drylander. The name is Bullwinkle. What are you doing here? Just standing here. You know what I mean. Just thought I'd make a funny. It wasn't so very funny. I guess nobody likes that joke. Now explain what your boat is doing around here and it better be good. We're trying to catch maybe Dick. That's good, that's good. And the stranger embraced Bullwinkle fervently. Now, why in the world should he do that? <laughs> 
I guess I'm just the cuddly type. We'll find out the real reason next time as Bullwinkle continues his strange tale in Defective Story or a muffled report. <laughs> In our last episode, you remember, Rocky and Captain Peach Fuzz had been whisked to the undersea land of Submerbia. Their transportation was a strange-looking beast that turned out to be a submarine vehicle containing the mayor of Submerbia, Fiorella La Pompano, and the long-lost Bullwinkle Moose. Bullwinkle, is it really you? It was when I got up this morning. And Bullwinkle started to tell his strange saga, how he had been in a rowboat when the mysterious eye surfaced beside him, how he had grabbed it and been pulled underwater, and how when he tried to get away, he had been drawn back by a big underwater vacuum. It's curtains for you, Drylander. The name is Bullwinkle. But you're a Drylander, aren't you? Drylander? I'm from Minnesota. So? The land of 10,000 lakes. Oh, well, what are you doing out here on the ocean? Trying to catch maybe Dick the Wailing Whale. Good friend, pal, chum, confrere, pretel. No, wait, wait. Amigo mio. See you. Comrade Tavares. Hold it, hold it. Buddy boy. How come the slather of friendly all of a sudden? Because any enemy of maybe Dick's is a friend of mine. Well, then, you ought to meet my pal, Rocky Squirrel. Love to, love to. Where is he? Oh, he's on board our ship, the... Hi, Rock. The Athabasco, where he... Rocky! That's a squirrel. You ever see a fish with goggles? No, but then I never saw a squirrel with goggles either. He must be looking for me. Hang on, we'll pick him up and take him home with us. Home? Where's home? Submerbia, of course. Oh, of course, they should have known. And as we saw, the odd-shaped craft had grabbed hold of Rocky and Captain Peach Fuzz and taken them through a solid rock cliff to the city of Suburbia. You mean this whole city is underwater? Certainly, look there. Sure enough, fish were swimming by just a short distance from our friend. Boy, there goes the keen sea bass, Rock. I'll catch it for dinner. No, way! But Bowenko made a lunch for the fish only to find... Oh! Boy, that's what I call hard water. It's not hard water. You hit the plastic dome. Yeah, and I think I'm getting a lump on it. Not your plastic dome, our plastic dome. Oh. You mean... Yes, a big dome covers our whole city. That's what keeps us warm and dry. It's sort of like a big sky. Yeah, but where does your light come from? Where else? From sunfish. And at night, I suppose it's covered with, uh... Starfish. Figures. But at that moment, our heroes were startled to feel the whole ground shake underneath their feet. Hey! What's happening, Mayor La Pompano? Oh, dear. We're having one of our sea quakes. Sea quakes? I never heard of sea quakes. You've heard of earthquakes, haven't you? Yeah, and hot quakes, too. A sea quake is an underwater earthquake. Hang on, Rocky. To what? To me. Maybe that'll keep me from rattling around. What causes sea quakes, Mayor La Pompano? You'll find out in a minute, Rocky. In less than that, actually, for in the next second, a dark shadow swept across them and an enormous shape made its way through the water above Submerbia. Hokey smoke, what is it? I can answer that, Rocky. It may be Dick. Yes, it was maybe Dick. And so huge was the Leviathan of the Deep that his very passing shook Submerbia violently. Oh, I do hope the dome doesn't crack. You had to open your big gills. Sure enough, water was pouring through a crack in the plastic dome. What are we going to do? How about two choruses of Bio Waterfall? Bio Waterfall. Oh, Winkle, can't you ever be serious? Believe me, when I sing, it's serious. It certainly is, and we'll find out just how serious next time in Leaky Lyrics, or Bullwinkle Plugs a Song.
our last episode sprung a bad leak at the end, remember? For maybe Dick, the whaling whale, passed over the sunken city of Submerbia and cracked its plastic dome. Now water is flooding into the city and our friends are up to their necks in trouble. Nonsense, I'm only up to my knees. I'm up to my neck. And I'm up to my second row of medals. Then we gotta do something. But what? How about stuffing something in that hole? Good idea. Here, Captain, there's a cork in this bottle. Great. But Captain Peach Fuzz wasn't called wrong way for nothing. He threw away the cork and tried to hammer the bottle into the hole. Hey, I got it. Let's put a bucket under it and catch the water. What happens when it fills up? You empty it out and put it... Oh, sorry, Captain. That won't work either, Bullwinkle. You know, gentlemen, I've just come to an interesting conclusion. What's that? We're all coming to an interesting conclusion. And pretty soon, too. There must be an answer. Yeah, if we just use our head bones. Bullwinkle, that's it. You said it. No, you did. I did. What? Head bone. Use your head bone. You gotta narrow that down a little. My head's all bone. And a yard wide. Sure it is. Bullwinkle, you can plug up the hole with your antlers. Sure enough, through a coincidence that defied even the wildest stretch of the imagination, Bullwinkle's antler exactly fit the leak in the plastic dome. Submerbia is saved. I feel like what's his name with the dike? Rocky, you're a squirrel of infinite mental rectitude. He's pretty smart, too. In a little while, Submerbia workmen were repairing the dome around Bullwinkle's antlers. And shortly thereafter, Mayor La Pompano was taking our heroes on a tour of the city. And this is our main thoroughfare. We call it Shad Row. Very interesting, Mayor La Pompano, but we've really got to get going. Going? We just got here, Rock. Bullwinkle, did you forget we're supposed to be hunting for maybe Dick? No. But they sure tried. And a short time later, our friends were on board one of those small suburban underwater scooters, prepared to resume their search for the whaling whale, only this time with torpedoes instead of a fish pole. Engine room, this is the captain. Captain, this is the engine. You mean you're the engineer? I mean I'm the engine. Well, full speed ahead, engine. Aye, aye, sir. And powered by Bullwinkle's mighty moose muscle, the strange craft moved through a submerbian escape hatch and into the strange undersea world outside. Oh, uh, this is the life, eh, Rocky? We're as snug as a bug in a sub. What do you see in the periscope, Captain? It must be bust, Rocky. All I can see is my own eye. Maybe it's just a reflection. Let me have a look. But what Rocky saw made his fur stand on end. That's an eye, all right, but it's not a reflection. No? My eye are blue. That eye is brown. You mean somebody's looking into our periscope? Oh, boy, was somebody looking into their periscope. Captain, it's maybe Dick. He's right behind us. All hands on deck. Look the bleep, batten the button, jettison the supercargo. Why so many orders, Captain? One of them's bound to be right. Bullwinkle, let's get out of here. Right, Rock. And the mighty moose began to pedal faster and faster. Slowly, the tiny submarine drew away from the monster behind it, and it looked as if they might escape, when suddenly... I'll teach you, you wailing wind. Fire one! But missing the torpedo lever entirely, Captain Peach Fuzz hit the reverse gear control. Instantly, the tiny sub was swallowed up by the cavernous mouth of Maybe Dick. Then, for the first time in history, Maybe Dick actually smiled. Assuming there is one, don't miss our next episode, Follow the Swallow, or the Inside Story. <laughs> Last time, you remember, our heroes were being pursued by the very thing they were out to capture, maybe Dick the Wailing Whale. Bullwinkle did his best to pedal them to safety, and it looked for a while as if he would succeed, but then Captain Peach Fuzz pulled the wrong lever and... Isn't that typical of me, though? You can stop pedaling now, Bullwinkle. Yeah. Sure got late early, didn't it? It's not late, Bullwinkle. Well, then how come it's so dark-like? Must be having an eclipse. No. I don't know how to say this, Bullwinkle. Well, try saying it in Czechoslovakian. You can understand Czechoslovakian. I'm always pretty good at picking up the Czech. <laughs> that's it, Bullwinkle. Go ahead and laugh. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's pretty hollow laughter. Light a light and you'll see why. And in the glow of a candle, Bullwinkle did see why. For high above them arched the interior of Maybe Dick. You mean we've been swallowed by Maybe Dick? Looks like. But just then, our heroes heard a strange sound above them. 
Good heavens, what's that? Must be maybe Dick's stomach rumbling. Maybe something he ate disagreed with him. Yeah, us! <laughs> hey, where's that noise coming from, Bullwinkle? From the top of these stairs. Stairs? Bullwinkle! Certainly. See, they go right up stairs. In a whale? Maybe he's subletting to a flounder. Hey, now, wait just a minute. And grabbing a nearby wrench, the plucky squirrel reached over and tapped one of maybe Dick's ribs. You won't get anywhere tickling him, Rocky. No, listen to that. Sounds like an ordinary steel beam to me. That's it. Maybe Dick is made out of steel. Boy, he's tougher than I thought. Don't you see? That means he isn't a whale at all. He's a ship, and I'll bet he's a pirate ship. Right you are, little busybody. And as our boys stared upward in terror, a menacing figure stalked to the top of the stairs. A menacing figure that somehow looked vaguely familiar. Who? Who are you? <laughs> yeah, we know that, but what's your first name? Allow me to introduce myself. Captain Horatio Hornswoggle, at your service. Captain Horatio Hornswoggle? My card. Haven't we met before, Captain Hornswoggle? I doubt it, you swab. I'm sure I've seen him somewhere, Bullwinkle. I know where. Where? That patch on his eye reminded me. I saw his picture in a magazine. He was selling shirts. No, that's somebody else. All right, you see, cooks, come up those stairs with your hands up. What are you going to do with us, Captain Hornswoggle? Yes, as one captain to another, why are we here? I just wanted somebody to play with Rollo. Rollo? Yes, he gets lonesome. Well, we'll be glad to cheer up the little fellow. Where is he? Come on out, Rollo. And around the corner came Rollo. Yay! Rollo was not a little fellow. He was a giant ape, eight feet tall in his sneakers. <laughs> And he looked like eight feet of pure mean. I brought some people to play with Rallo last week, but they didn't work out. What happened? He broke them. We're pretty bustable ourselves, you know. No, I don't know, but I'll find out. Okay, Rallo. And the huge monster lumbered nearer and nearer to our friends. Don't miss our next spine-tingling episode. And that's my own personal spine he's talking about. Playtime for Rallo, or rest in pieces. secret is out. Maybe Dick, the mysterious whaling whale, is nothing more or less than an enormous pirate ship run by that prince of schnooks, Boris Baden. Please, Captain Horatio Hornswoggle. Yes, the secret is out, but our heroes are in. Inside, maybe Dick. Sounds like a good name for a book. What's more, in our last episode, they received a pressing invitation to play patty cake with Rollo, an eight-foot ape. Rollo likes to play with people. They bend so easy. There must be some mistake. I'm not a people. I'm more of a moose. And I'm a squirrel. You're a people. I've been thinking of resigning. Okay. Come on, Rollo. I'll play with you. Rocky, you flipped your goggles. He'll crush you like an egg, Rocky. Maybe not. Come on, Rollo. That's right. Get it over with quick. But as Rollo's huge paws reached for Rocky, the agile squirrel zoomed away from his grasp. You can't catch me! Rocky, this is no time to play tag! Along the high platform, the giant ape blundered following after the elusive Rocky. Come on, Rocky! Come on, Rollo! <laughs> then at the end of the platform, Rocky suddenly zoomed into the air, and as Rollo reached up for him, he went over the railing and into the bilgewater below. Now, Bullwinkle! Run for it! The moose grabbed Captain Peach Fuzz and dashed through a doorway behind the pirate. But you won't get away, Squirrel. Sure enough, Burris aimed one of his flintlock pistols and fired. <laughs> Nearly missing our hero. Next time for sure, kiddo. And Burris drew a bead on the frantically flying squirrel. It looked hopeless, but just then the first bullet that Burris had fired struck a steel beam, <laughs> angled off, <laughs> and headed back for him. Yikes! <laughs> Pursued closely by his own bullet, the buccaneer had only one course open. Look out, Rallo! Golly, that means we've won. We're in command of the maybe deck. And in a little while, Rocky and his friends were in the wheelhouse, high in the superstructure of maybe Dick.
Now that things have slowed down a little, maybe you'll tell me something, Rock. What's that? What the ding-dong is going on, anyway? It's all right here in this log, Boo-Winkle. Listen, dear log, today decided to become a pirate. What, what an, an idea. idea. I, I can, can see it now. First, I built huge boats shaped like whale. Then I christened it with bottle of prosic acid. I named the Maybe Dick. Then I install crazy whistle that goes. I adopt Rallo to help with the business. Then when sheep comes along, I blow whistle. Sheep stops. I open front of Maybe Dick, swallow whole sheep. Rallo and I rob everybody. Money, gold, jewels. Afterward, I let sheep sail out again. Halfway. No sheep, no evidence, just loot. Loot! <laughs> Then that miserable squirrel has to come and ruins everything. Calm down, Boris, darling. Your neck is turning purple again. Natasha, I've lied, cheated, stolen, double crossed. Yes, Boris. Tell me, where did I go wrong? Meanwhile, up on the bridge, our hero was jubilant. That's Rocky. Rocky. Little did he know that at that moment, not too far away, a squadron of land-based bomber planes was heading his way. Their mission, destroy maybe Dick. Don't miss our next episode, A Whale of a Tale, or There She Blows Up. Last time you remember, our heroes had captured Maybe Dick, the whaling whale, who turned out to be a huge pirate ship in disguise. <laughs> now they are gleefully steering Maybe Dick back to port, all unaware of the trouble that lies ahead, or rather, below. For deep in the hold of Maybe Dick, the defeated Boris Vatten... Uh, Horatio Hornswoggle is preparing... Defeated? Who's defeated? We are, darling. You and me and Rollo here. <laughs> Nonsense. Just a little setback is all. Boris, if we were set back any further, we'd be out of story altogether. Don't be silly, Natasha. By the time we're through, those goody goods up there will be shaking in their goody good shoes. You mean... Yes. We have only begun to fry. And as if that weren't enough, high above our heroes, a squadron of British planes are searching for maybe Dick in order to destroy him. I say, sir, then it is now. Good old Featherby. Well, sir, shouldn't we attack the blighter? Are you mad, Featherby? I haven't finished my tea. Oh, sorry, sir. Bad show, Featherby. But our heroes had no knowledge of the planes droning overhead. They only knew that they had taken command of the Maybe Dick. And we're heading for home. With Peter Peach for that the wheel. Hard apart the Lee turn, spin the wheel and watch it turn. Rocky, I don't want to be a snitch, but Captain Peach Fuzz is steering in circles again. Don't worry, Bullwinkle. I disconnected the steering wheel. Round and round goes the Maybe Dick spinner, and when she stops, there's always a winner. Then he's not really in command of the ship? No, but why spoil his fun? Besides, we have other things to worry about. Well, as long as we got something to worry about. We do. I was a little worried about not having anything to worry about. Yeah, but... Not being worried worried me. Yeah, but... But now you say there is something to worry about. Yeah, but... So now I'm not worried. Yeah, but... Yeah, but what? I don't know. I forgot what I was going to say. Probably something about that pirate captain down below. What was his name? Hornswoggle. Horatio Hornswoggle. And sure enough, in the doorway stood the pirate chief himself. What's that in his hand, Rocky? Looks like a bomb with a burning fuse. It isn't an old day, sucker, sucker. What are you going to do with it? Absolutely nothing. Well, that's all right, then. Yeah, but if he does absolutely nothing, it'll go off in a minute. Well, don't just stand there. Do something. Okay, Moose. First I take over ship, then I feed you to fishes. But that's terrible. It's terrible for you. It's very nice for fishes. Yeah, we mustn't be selfish, Rock. Now, wait a minute, Bullwinkle. There's two of us and only one of him. Oh, you are the sharp-eyed rascal. No, no. I mean, if we jump him, the odds are in our favor. Not for long, buddy. yoo hoo Rallo! Yes, the enormous ape was just outside the door, and at Boris's call, he plunged into the room. Unfortunately, the swinging door hit Boris's arm, and the bomb, with its splintering fuse, began to roll about the deck. Grab it, Boo! But as fate would have it, the maybe Dick was at that moment running into heavy seas, and as the deck tilted back and forth, the bomb rolled about crazily, its fuse growing shorter and shorter. I got it, 
Well, I got it. Who got it? You got it. No, he got it. Throw it, Rollo. Throw like this. Oh, what happened? You didn't tell him which way to throw it. Oh, Fufu. Look out. Here it comes again. Uh, throw it overboard, Bowwinkle. Right, Rocky. But as Bowwinkle dashed for the side, the deck tilted sharply, and he slid right back to where he started from. Short trip. But it looked like a longer one coming up, for at that moment... Don't miss our next episode, Fast and Moose or Charlie's Antler. Last time, Captain Horatio Hornswoggle... Or, as we know him, Boris Badenov... ...made his bid to recapture command of the Maybe Dick. But things went amiss when Rollo the Ape accidentally knocked the bomb from his hand. Now's our chance. Let's get out of here. Well, Winkle, we can't run away like scared rabbits. Could we walk away like brave rabbits? No, we gotta throw that bomb overboard. Okay, but being a hero sure makes you look stupid sometimes. Sure enough, just then... However, that explosion hadn't come from the bomb at all, but from a squadron of British attack planes high above. And so when the smoke cleared... Hey, it didn't go off! Must be something wrong with the bomb! Sure is. Look, there's three holes in it. Three holes? Hey, I begin to smell a rat. You go. This isn't a bomb. It's a bowling ball. You made a counterfeit bomb. <laughs> what else? Go get him, Rollo. <laughs> Uh-oh, here comes trouble with a capital trub. This way, Bullwinkle. <laughs> Through that door. <clears throat> No use, Rock. It won't open. Maybe it swings the other way. Of course, what a fox path. But now all our troubles are all boy. And in a moment, our friends were dangling from the side of the ship while Rollo stumped gleefully on their fingers. Oh, oh, oh! Meanwhile, up on the bridge... Oh, Boris, you're such a no good Nick. You were born to be his. Well, darling, guess we won't need this anymore. And Natasha tossed the heavy bowling ball out of the porthole. As fate would have it, Rollo chose that moment to look over the rail at his hapless victims and... We stayed, Rock! Not quite. Look there. Sure enough, the planes were peeling off for their final attack on the ship. Natasha, do you see what I see? Very often, darling. Well, as the Bulgarians say, testi novas derotni. Meaning? The jig is up. Let's go. And in a few moments, the villains were in a small boat pulling away from the Maybe Dick. The leading all our loot, Boris. Silly girl. Everything we pirate is right here in these boxes. Oh, you so smart, Boris. Old Mr. Mind thinks of everything, Natasha. Except... Except what? With Rollo. A good question, for at that moment, Rollo was directly above them. And not wanting to be left behind, he leaped for Boris's boat. No, no, Rollo. Go back. Go back. <laughs> and as the small boat capsized, Boris's boxes of loot were hurled through the air and right into Bullwinkle's hand. Ooh! Well, old mastermind, what you got to say for yourself now? Only one thing to say, Natasha. And that is? Shut up, your mouth! Those British planes will be on us in a minute, Rock. Quick, hand me that paintbrush. And Rocky zoomed over the deck of Maybe Dick painting as he went. Three seconds to bomb point, sir. Two, one. Stop. Hold your fire. Mm. What is it, Commander? Look there, Feather Bear. Why, it's just a great big capital T, Commander. And what time is it? Exactly four o'clock. Which is? Good heavens. Tea time. time! By Jove, they must be British! And the planes waggled their wings in a friendly farewell and flew on. So a little while later, our friends sailed into port to a hero's welcome. Yay! A welcome marred only when Captain Peach Fuzz tried to blow the whistle and pull the wrong lever. <laughs> then maybe Dick sank like a stone, and to this day remains underwater where it has been made into a rest home for retired skin divers. But tell me, Rock, how did you ever get the idea of painting a big T? Just between you and me, I didn't, Paul Winkle. Mm -hmm. I was trying to spell out something else. What was it? This. The end. Well, I'll be jiggered. So it is. <laughs>